What's up, internet people? I just wanted to make a video today uh, to, to share with you a fix for another problem that I've had. And probably a lot of other people have had the same problem, but it's one that you can't really fix yourself. Well, I shouldn't say fix yourself, diagnose yourself. Um, it's really not a lot of information out there. There's um, forums you can read, but um, you kind of got to decipher through and see well, or what they're talking about matching my symptoms. So let me tell you what was going on with me. And I think by reading forums, a lot of other people were having the same problem. They just didn't know it. So, got a 98 Chevy C1500. Comes with a 4L60 E transmission. But so do a lot of GM products. And not just Chevy trucks, you know, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. Same basic transmission. The tail shaft's a bit different. Um, Chevy vans came with the transmission. Um... Probably some Chevy cars, Caprices, whatnot, Camaros. So a lot of vehicles use the same transmission. The problem I was having, and it kind of just started one day on the way to work. Um, after 40 miles an hour, between 40 miles an hour and 60 miles an hour, my transmission act like it was jumping out of gear. Um, I would just be driving, no heavy acceleration or everything. It would just, I'd watch my RPM gauge just, wah, wah. I'm like, what in the world is going? Is this kept going on and on and on and it wouldn't stop? Um, so I thought I had a transmission problem. I thought uh, something was slipping. It's what it feels like, something slipping. And when you start looking up 4L60Es, the, one of the biggest problems you'll see is that the 3 4 clutch letting go, starting to slip. So I started researching that. But the people who have that problem, they were saying that like their RPMs were climbing like a thousand or fifteen hundred RPMs, you know, just wah, wah, grabbing, you know. And I'm like, well, that doesn't sound like my problem, you know. So did some more research, and I couldn't really find anything. So then I, I put my scan tool on. Um, I could see the torque converter slipping, and it was only slipping after it was engaged, obviously, but bef between 40 and 60 miles an hour, it was doing the slipping, up to 350 RPMs or so. So I, I couldn't figure out why, and I had to get another scan tool, I had to get a snap-on, and I saw the duty cycle to the PWM solenoid. Now, let me explain that. A PWM solenoid is, is called the Pulse Width Modulation Solenoid. So in the 4L60E, there's actually two solenoids that control the torque converter and when it locks up. You've got the TCC lockup, which is just on or off. You know, it comes on, torque converter locks. It goes off, torque converter unlocks. But then you have the PWM solenoid, which feeds pressure to the lockup solenoid. And what this does is it controls how much pressure goes to the torque converter during lockup. So I was watching on the, on the snap-on, between 40 and 60 miles an hour, the computer would lock up about 70% duty cycle. Then once lockup occurred, duty cycle would ramp down to 50. Hold on. So I could see through the scan tool that when the solenoid was only at about 50 to 60 percent duty cycle is when the, when the slip started happening. So this is telling me that either, well it could be a combination of all these things, but the solenoid was getting old and weak and wasn't performing like it should anymore, and or you know, the torque converter's worn to the point where 50% duty cycle isn't enough pressure to make it lock up. Either way, that was the definite problem. Because on the snap-on scanner, I, I did have a test function where I could take control of the PWM solenoid 
and I could tell it how much duty cycle to do. So that's exactly what I did at 40 miles an hour. I told it to go into 100% duty cycle. Problem solved. No more slipping, popping out of overdrive, none of that. So I knew I found the, the problem. So what's the fix? Well, I started researching transmission rebuilders, different companies, because they'll tell you on their website what they do when they build these transmissions, the kind of parts they put in and modifications and whatnot. And a lot of them will completely delete the PWM solenoid. Um, now that part, I don't know how they delete it. Like I've, I've heard, I had one transmission guy tell me there's like some kind of plug or cap they can put into that part of the valve body. But either way, what they do is they delete the PWM solenoid. So if transmission builders are doing it, there's obviously a reason for it. From what I've heard and heard them say, you know, having that PWM solenoid creates extra wear and tear on your torque converter, basically wears it out. So it creates extra wear and tear on your torque converter clutch. It also creates a lot more heat in the transmission because anytime anything is slipping, it's creating heat. So really it's just unneeded. It's just strictly a comfort thing is all it was designed for. So I needed to delete the PWM solenoid. So I looked on YouTube, I put in PWM delete. And sure enough, there's a real quick, like two minute video of a guy shows you exactly what to do. You pull out your, you drop your pan on your transmission, you pull out your PWM solenoid, and you uh, take the first O-ring off, then you take a Dremel tool and you gotta notch it. You gotta notch the solenoid in a specific place. And what that does is just allow the transmission fluid to completely bypass the solenoid altogether then what you do is you put it back in your transmission and put your transmission back together. You're done. It's real simple. It's real easy. Um, and it works great. And I highly recommend it even if you don't have problems because I think you're going to save your transmission in the long run because you're no longer slipping that torque converter. There's no need in it. Now, you might think to yourself, well, you know, why not is get rid of it, you know, uh, unplug it, whatever, and you, you can't. It has to be put back in because if you try unplugging the thing, you're going to throw a code. You're going to throw a transmission code. It's going to say, I don't know the code number, but it's PWM solenoid open circuit. Basically, the computer's saying, oh, hey, I don't see it. Um, so uh, that's about it. You know, I wanted to go over what it was, what the benefits are, and it's what it does for you, you'll notice if you do this modification that it'll feel like you have a five-speed transmission now. That torque converter lockup is so pronounced, it actually feels like another gear shift. Um, so it, it, it's really good for you. I'm going to try to, I'm coming up on a red light here. So we're going to, I'm going to get on the speedometer. I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like when it happens. All right, we're at zero. Now second gear. Third gear. Fourth gear. overdrive lockup. You see what a, a big difference that makes? Like I said, it's like having a fifth gear now. It's 100% locked up. You know, I don't care how hard you lug this, it's not going to slip. Like anybody who's had a Chevy, like there's certain things that I've noticed now that never happened before. Like we're fixing to go up a bridge right here, okay? Usually anytime I go up the bridge, you know, it would start slipping and just go pop out of overdrive. But look, I'm probably at 50% throttle now. Yeah, I'm losing speed, 
because it's kind of a steep bridge. But look, no slipping. We're just we're just climbing it. And another thing I noticed is I actually have a deceleration clutch in this transmission that never engaged before. So I'm completely off the gas. And right now I just felt it engage. There's a clutch that's actually holding me back and keeping my speed from raising too high. That has never happened before in this truck. Probably because every time you let off the gas, the torque converter automatically pops out. At least it used to. It doesn't do that now. Unless you hit the brake, the torque converter will not disengage unless it gets below 38 miles an hour. So, a lot of improvements. Like I said, I highly recommend doing it. Even if you don't have any problems, I think it'll, um, it'll save you problems in the long run. Less wear and tear on your transmission. And I've also noticed an increase in my fuel mileage. Before, I would get maybe 225, 230 miles out of a tank of gas. Well, you can see I'm almost down time to fill it up again. And I'm at 281. So, um, the only thing I can figure is, you know, the computer, or the engine's not constantly going in and out of lockup. So it's more efficient now, which translates to better gas mileage. So overall, I'm just completely satisfied with this modification, 100%. There's so many positive things that come from it. And, and you know, the thing is, if you don't like it, if you do it, and it doesn't work for you, which it will, but if, for some reason, if you don't like it, it's not permanent. You just pop out the solenoid that you modified and replace it with another one and you'll go back to being the way you were before so there's really no negative aspects of doing a PWM delete on your 4L60E whatsoever that I can see but just wanted to share this with you guys have a good one